Svema Astrum 400? Were the Soviets onto something? I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. As usual, we have Tri-X in blue, the Svema 400 in red. And what a bumpy ride we have from Svema 400. There is not much of a straight line portion on this film. Uh, it, it peaks and valleys pretty significantly throughout its entire rise. I wouldn't say it necessarily shoulders. It's just very bumpy and uneven in how it renders tonality. But what we can see is a very long flat line before the toe begins. Now this film was exposed at the same intensity as the Tri-X, both of them rated 400, but because of that long toe, uh, or long flat before the toe, what we're actually getting is film that's about two stops slower than box speed. So I'm actually getting about the performance of a 100 speed instead of 400. That means rather than printing the negative that was exposed for 400, we printed the negative that was exposed at 100 in order to actually get the um, shadow density that matched the Tri-X. So let's go ahead and look at the prints. 
and see how this rendered out in real life. All right, here we have Svema 400 and Triax 400. Uh, so obviously first thing we notice is highlights are a little hot over here. We can see that also with the white. Uh, it's just a little overdeveloped based off the provided times for stock D76. Now, I will say, while I got full film speed from the 200 and the 64 speed from Astrum, uh, I did not get any 100. It was not available at the time I ordered all of this film. Um, I will say, however, this 400 speed film is nowhere near 400. I got uh, the same shadow detail through this section, which is what I looked at as my main point of reference uh, to match this in density. Uh, this film came out at, uh, and I should also say, the um, sensitometer uh, results as well. So both sensitometer and actual shooting. This came out at a 125 speed film. So almost two stops slower than advertised. So is that, in, is that across the board for all of Svema 400 or is it just my results? Couldn't tell you, just wanna let you know that's the result that I got. Now, uh, when it comes to the other features, we can see here we are getting some strange response in color. So typically this row would be all the same dark tone, this would be the same medium tone. We can see that here, same dark tone, same medium tone. So I'm getting that medium tone here, but then these three are lighter, and then this tone is lighter than the other dark ones. This is my red, that's my cyan. Cyan came out like it should, red's too light. But then my flesh tone, light flesh tone, my magenta and yellow came out too light. Weird response. Uh, so since I'm flesh tone, <laughs> the light flesh tone, I also came out lighter. Part of that is the development, but not all, because that's not over developed a lot, just a little bit. Um, but this definitely came out pretty hot, and I would say that's a combination of development and sensitivity to that particular part of the color spectrum. Okay, so aside from weird spectrum and being almost two full stops too slow for what it says, the print overall looks pretty good, but let's zoom in and see what the uh, grain and detail look like. All right, section number one, looking at the grain, it seems pretty on par with the Triax in this regard. Uh, it is a very thin base, and uh, I feel like it does not hold very flat in the negative holder. That's something to think about. Uh, it, I don't know, it's just a weird film. Um, I don't know if that's typical of all Soviet. Is that Soviet film, Russian film? I don't know. I have no idea what the uh, provenance of this film is, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's just a very unusual type film if you're used to Kodak and Ilford and Agfa, Foma. I don't know. It's just strange. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's uh, it's fairly fine grain. I can't say for a 400 because I say it's actually a 100. Uh, all right, here's the detail again. You can see the grain on the side uh, in that background, and it is fairly fine. I would say it actually matches Tri-X pretty well, considering um, all the other differences between them. Is it the Russian Tri-X? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's not something I'm gonna go out and shoot more of. All right, here we are on the lighted side of the shoulder, and it has reasonable sharpness. It's not the sharpest film I've used. Uh, I think actually the other two films from this maker, Astrum or Svema, whichever one is the actual maker, are sharper. I'm not getting the crisp detail in the ribbing of this shirt collar that I'm seeing in other films. It's still relatively sharp, don't, don't get me wrong. It's just not as sharp as I've seen even from this maker. 
but it's okay. All right, and here we are with the face. We're losing some really uh, fine detail in the highlights because of that slight overexposure uh, and the fact that the red is just gonna naturally overexpose as well. Uh, overall though, it seems pretty decent in its uh, ability to render skin tone uh, as well as just fine detail. Not a whole lot to talk about other than it's two stops slower than advertised in my experience uh, and the uh, methodology that I chose to uh, do this project with. It's just uh, like all cinema films, I think it might be discontinued and it's just being re-rolled by someone uh, and sold in um, bulk canisters. It clearly was uh, just kind of home done uh, in, in what I got mailed to me. So that's it for this film. Uh, fairly unremarkable, not something I'm going to shoot a lot of because I think there are just much better options out there, even if you want a unique look. So thanks again for watching. If you would like to help support this channel so I can continue to make videos like this or uh, other videos where we need materials for things like this, then please think about supporting my Patreon or uh, merchandise down in the links below. And we will see you next time.